I'm going to show you how you can make your own turbo manifold with a handful of cheap tools and I'm going to walk you through how I made mine step by step. Let's do it. Welcome back. If you're new to the channel, I'm Matt. In my previous videos, we got the supplies to make the turbo manifold. We got a cheap TIG welder and practice some TIG welding, and we made a jig for our manifold. Now let's get after making the manifold. So I think I got one of the, the runners already figured out. Take some of these elbows here, run this guy like that. Man, that's, that's pretty damn close. So let's go ahead and start tacking some of this in. I think I think we'll start with this one down here. So we'll just hold it like that. Grab our marker. Sweet. All right, we got that tacked in. Now let's see where this next piece will go. All right, looks like I need to grind a little. That's not a little off of here and here. Looks like we could grind a little more out. And we'll probably grind a little bit right here too. Woo that's hot. Put a little bit of a bevel back in where I ground it off. And it's looking pretty dang good to me. All right, let's tack weld this up. How did I manage to do that? Okay. All right, let's grind those welds out and try that again. All right, <laughs> let's try that again. All right, we got that tacked in. Let's see if we can't make these guys line it. Give it a little persuasion. Got me a little bit of masking tape. <laughs> I got me a little bit of masking tape as a, a helping hand. Man, I think this will definitely make it a little easier. All right, let's give it a whirl. What the hell? Man, if I ain't one thing, it's another, I'll tell you that. Well, I got one of the runners all tacked in. Gap's a little big here, but that's all right. We can bridge the gap there. Now I just need to figure out how to go from here around and here. So I'm doing the, the inner two here. I'll just duplicate what I did over here. But once I get this all figured out, you know, this whole other half will be that much easier. But one of the things I have to take into consideration is the angle that this is going at, just to make sure that we're not going to hit anything down here so we'll have to just kind of turn it at an angle like so well i've kind of stared at this thing until i'm blue in the face i think i'm just going to get after it start putting some pieces on and we'll just figure it out from there how's that sound let's do it I'm making some pretty awesome progress and getting some flash burn while I'm at it. Uh, so I had, to, I had to start putting a jacket on because man, I don't wanna be all burnt up, but check it out. So what I ditched the idea of trying to make this runner meet right here. There are some things I will need to go back and tweak to hopefully close up some of these gaps a little bit. So now what I'm working on at this moment is finishing up this runner this one is going to have to come up and over and down, which isn't a big deal. It should still pretty much be the same length as the rest of these, but it's coming out pretty awesome. So I'm gonna keep hammering at it and get this done. And hopefully before I get out of here, I'm just going to take this thing off of this jig and we'll see how everything mounts up. Uh, if I did my homework correctly, it should mount up perfect. I can't wait to see how it looks on the engine. I think this runner is gonna be the biggest, oops. <laughs> this runner is going to be the biggest pain in the butt because we're probably going to have to have about three sections where we need to just connect all of this. All right, let's get after it. 
I got all the runners done. It looks, it looks awesome. <laughs> Check it out. Ooh. I think I'm ready to take this thing off just as soon as it gets to room temperature. And then we'll toss it on the motor and fingers crossed it fits. Good. <laughs> so it did mount up however I had to remove cylinder number three's runner because it was running into the oil cooler right here. I'll have to make a change to this one as well because it's riding right against the oil filter. So basically just need to make this little part right here, this extension a little longer so that way this will swing out probably make it another inch or so longer that'll swing out uh this this one's just fine however this number two is sitting on it so we'll have to make that a little longer we do have some room for this to just kind of come out a little bit into this space here but all in all making some pretty good progress well, it is the next day after about 24 hours working straight on this manifold over here. I have came back with a fresh set of eyes on this thing because lack of sleep will just really make you not think clearly. So I've got an idea. So let's check this out. I rethought really about this. I'm going to remove this. I wasn't too big of a fan of, of just this, this, these back two runners. I really want to connect these runners here and here just to make things simpler them not have to be as long it'll help reduce weight but what i'm going to do is order a couple really short radius 90s so that way we can have our short 90s and then have it go down to these runners here rather than having to connect it like that which that's fine but i want this thing to be a little more compact in hopes that i can actually route the exhaust through the back rather than having to punch this thing through the hood plus i think i'm going to move the flange location just a little bit so that way we avoid hitting that sensor that you could see by the opening of the turbo so i need to swing these things out a little more which means i need to extend this it'll probably help close some of these gaps up a little bit and by getting those short 90 degree radiuses i'll, I'll be able to do a, a tighter bend and we'll be able to take this runner run it here and same thing on this other side so be sure to stay tuned subscribe if you have it so that way you can follow along with this build because i am walking you as much as humanly possible step by step through how i'm going to make this work with a crap minimal amount of tools <laughs>
or not a sensor, excuse me. This is, eh, I don't know what you want to call it, an actuator. It's, it's basically for the advance or, or retard for the the exhaust camshaft. Anyhow, look at that. It's, it's fitting pretty nicely. We're not bumping into anything. Well, I take that back. We are bumping into something. This is going to be an issue with changing the oil. Um, I initially did this just to kind of get away from this runner here. But I think what I'm gonna have to do is just remove this little piece here, just bring this all in a little bit, and hopefully I got enough room just to kind of angle this this way and just have a straight shot. It'll probably be at a little bit of an angle, and then that should get me away from this oil filter cap here. If it still ends up being an issue, I do know that the 1.6 liter, in which we've kind of been using a lot of 1.6 liter parts, like the rods, for example, to make this build happen, because it's the same block and all that, and they have an oil cooler in which the filter is actually, we'll get this out of the way. And which instead of it the oil filter being over here if i can there we are it is down in this area away from everything so if this still ends up being an issue changing that because i do want a pretty long sweeping exhaust the kind of come down and around so by moving this i think it'll allow that however i think this still might end up being an issue and i'll have to get the undermount isn't that right mac yeah <laughs> if you want any corners for free go to the corner store they're not free at the corner store I mean, buy them. has no idea the value of money anyhow let's get back at it what i'm going to do is take the turbo manifold off i'm going to bolt it back on now i'm going to be in this video <clears throat> for a bit you have to be eating corn nuts in my video <laughs> making all kinds of noise in the background <laughs> turd <laughs> so i'm gonna mount everything back up i'm going to adjust that runner and then we'll toss it back on the engine if everything's hunky dory we'll weld everything up let's do it Well, I redid those two runners and I think it is looking great. So let's go ahead and toss it on the engine and see how it fits. Dang, check this out. So we solved our issues. So we solved our issue with not being able to access the oil filter. Now there's there's plenty of space around it. Let me turn the light on so you can guys get a little bit better of a view. Look at that. Plenty of space here. It's no longer banging into it. We got a little bit of space there. Looks like we got some room for our hydraulic, whatever this actuator thing is. I'm not going to run a full four inches. I am going to reduce it down a little bit, which will be fine. In which here is our reducer. I'm reducing it to three inches. Get on there. So there we go. We got our reducer on. Looks like we have space to plug in our connector here you can see exactly why i'm reducing it i don't i don't need a full four inches we'll play around with the sizing and all that later on but man, there we go that is looking fantastic looking a okay now it's that time of the program where we semi dismantle it and weld it up let's get after it now that i got the manifold off the engine what i'm going to do is just break off some of these tack welds here uh, that also allow me to kind of close this up a little bit because uh, when you're welding stainless steel this thing tends to shift a little bit however we're going to break these runners off and we're going to use this abrasive wheel on our bench grinder and this will just help to kind of clean this up make it look nice we'll clean up some of these uh let's just call them tack welds where we're just really trying to, to figure this thing out because i did have to take this apart a handful of times in order to get to this spot but this will help kind of clean those up and whatever this doesn't clean up we'll use our angle grinder in order to just kind of flatten out some of these spots with the a, man i can't talk right now with the this guy over here 80 grit sanding disc so let's get after it
So here's the difference before and after. Just kind of removes all the coating that's on this. Makes it a little shiny. Makes it a little nicer, I think. <laughs> all right, we got my tungsten all sharpened. We got it purging, or it's been purging for a while. I'm just gonna start at these wells and just kind of make my way back here. Got my little purge line hooked up. Clean my filler rod right off with a, a little bit of acetone. Got me a fresh set of clean gloves. Let's see if we can uh, make some nice welds here. Wish me luck. Zip up the jacket. Well, I almost got this one runner all finished up, but I ran out of gas. <laughs> Anyhow, it's it's looking pretty good and I'm learning something along the way. Anytime I'm adding the filler, this probably isn't the greatest looking part. This is where I started out. And then we started getting a little better here. If I get the camera to focus. Stop focusing on the helmet. This out of the background. But those are looking pretty decent. Hard to see on camera, but. And then this is a section where I had to add filler rod. This part here, I just really wasn't adding filler rod right there. It looks pretty awesome. Uh, and then some of these areas where I have to fill some of these bigger gaps. Not the, the prettiest, but it'll hold. So I just need to be real mindful when it comes to doing these other runners just to make sure all these gaps are closed up. Uh, some of it is just gonna have a gap because I don't have the best method for cutting this stuff. I mean, look at that right there. See that? But that's all right. We'll get it. And I think I'll use the uh, sanding grinding wheel just to kind of knock down some of my big tack welds here. But I've definitely learned a lot, learning a lot doing this. All right, I went and got some more gas and I, I finished this runner up. So now I have this one back purging the, the collector. We have the collector back purging. So let's go ahead and weld this up. I finished welding up the collector and it doesn't look too shabby. Looks looking pretty good. Let me see if I can get a little bit of a close up on some of these welds. Got some nice blues, purples, golds going on. This was, uh, it's probably not that tricky for me because I'm so used to being such a, a crappy fitter that I've kind of learned how to fill that stuff in. But all in all, not too bad. Pretty happy with that. I won't be called Dime Stack Matt anytime soon, but let's move on to the next leg of the runner. Polish that up, remove all the crap from it, and I'm gonna take the sanding wheel and get rid of some of those heavy, just bulbous, bulbous, just, I don't even have the word for it. Very, <laughs> very amateur tax, how about that? I got the next runner back virgin. Let's go ahead and weld it up. Well, it is another day. I have all the runners finished up. Check this out. They're looking pretty awesome. I got all of them welded up. I just kind of repeated the same process as I showed you with the other two. Just cleaned them up, degreased them with some acetone, and we finished doing some of our welds. They're looking, you know, <laughs> for my abilities, uh, they're not too bad. Some are better than others. Now we just need to take these and we're going to tack them back in. I have everything just kind of loose so that way we can get them back into their position once we tack them up i am going to remove everything off the jig put it back on the engine over there just make sure everything's still lining up we'll throw it in the jig and then once we're finished welding the runners we'll do our wastegate Well, since the camera's last been off, I have got three runners almost completely welded up. <laughs> and what I mean by that is, hopefully I'm not gonna touch anything super hot. 
I'm gonna have to take this out of this jig in order to finish up some of these welds back over here where I just cannot reach with this jig. And I think for the most part, we got this all welded up. Now, in between here has been the biggest pain in the butt. I got one little spot right in there where it's very hard to reach. The gas is having a hard time getting to it and shielding the welding. So, eh, you know, it'll weld up, but it's not gonna be the prettiest. So let's go ahead and tack up the last runner. We'll weld as much as we can. And then I'm gonna have to take it off of this jig to finish up the welding on the flange. And we'll have to use that piece of aluminum down there to, to use as a heat sink, but I need to drill and tap that guy. We're on the home stretch. Let's go ahead and do it. And I just wanna point out, this has been almost all project long where I'm just rigging stuff up to kind of hold it in place because I try and tack it and it just doesn't want to tack together. So uh, this is my helping hand. <laughs> Ooh, this thing's looking pretty good. You know, for a first time doing something like this. So I'm just kind of waiting for it to cool down. It's almost completely cooled down the, the room temperature, which I still need to the weld the runners back here, like I talked about a little earlier. But I think before I take this off the jig, I need to figure out how I'm going to mount my wastegate right here. The only issue is I don't have a hole saw or anything big enough to cut through that. And it might take a, a lot of just grinding with the carbide bit. And I want this to kind of, we'll cut it right about here. So that way it's, it's pretty close to the, the collector, but that's gonna be a challenge all in itself as well. And figuring out how to make a pattern off of this and converting it to this. And I'm just gonna have it angle up and out so that way it'll help promote flow. And we'll just mount our wastegate here. So we'll send the, the weight <laughs> so we'll send the wastegate exhaust and the regular exhaust into one pipe that will go underneath the car and i still need to figure out where the hell i'm going to put this this is pretty thick I'm thinking about putting it right here but i'm not sure whether or not the exhaust is going to cover it up not that it's that big of a deal but so i gotta figure that out as well still a lot more work to do but definitely seeing the light at the end of the tunnel Slight change of plans. I think I'm just going to use a little piece that I have to mount the wastegate on because I just do not have the tools in order to, to cut this thing down, much less be able to drill some holes in it. This is all I got. I'm gonna use what I have and uh, we're gonna make this work. Man, this shit's damn near impossible to cut into. We're gonna make it happen though. Yeah, I just broke the tip off of this damn thing. Perfect. What a piece of shit. Oh, we got a broken tip. A smoking Ryobi that's died. And uh, this is how far we are. Hmm. Woo, that was a pain to do. So I had to use, woo. My carbide bit, and um, from what you saw of me drilling it, I hogged this thing out <laughs> the rest of the way with this. And then I use this guy, which has been on the bench grinder, but clean the middle up a little bit so that way we can go ahead and weld in the wastegate. Everything's fitting okay. <laughs> I'll have to go back and uh, just kind of port that out a little bit, but now we just need to make this take the shape of that. All right, I got our little extension piece for the wastegate ready to go, cleaned it up. Just need to degrease it. And then we're gonna take our max speeding rods wastegate, which I'll leave a link down in the description. I got a promo code from those guys, so. so I'm gonna tack this up and then we'll mount this bad boy right about here. And I think we'll be good to go. We'll weld it up. There we go, we got the wastegate all tacked on. I'm pretty happy with the placement. Just need to finish welding this thing up. It was looking pretty dope. <laughs> it's starting to come together. We got that all welded up. I am going to weld on the inside of this, but let's take this off the, the jig here and let's toss it onto the engine and see how it looks. Dang, so that's looking pretty good. Got everything all bolted up. Oops. Still just need to weld the flanges in which I'll do the heat sink, but everything's clearing quite nicely. And then I think I'll put that little plate here. I think you'll still be able to see it. Sweet, so let's get this thing off and weld up the remaining little bits of the runner, shall we? And then we need to do some 
porting work and whatnot. A little cleanup stuff, let's do it. Just gonna set this guy on here and mark where these holes are at and we'll drill and tap them at the same time. Please don't move, please don't move. Probably should have done this before I started welding this flange up. Let's see if we can't use a gasket or something. Got this pretty cool drill and tap set from Harbor Freight. I'll leave a, a link down in the description. If you plan on doing this yourself, this will probably help out quite a bit. The old right takes a look at and keeps on ticking, although there's something really weird going on. <laughs> Ooh, that's noisy. Yeah, okay, never mind. She's finally dead. Well, I guess we'll just have to get back to this here in a little bit, but what I want to do is I'm gonna clean up some of the sugaring here with one of these little wire wheels. I was able to stuff one of them down in there and we'll just clean up some of that sugaring. We'll also just weld it up because we are gonna get a lot of heat here. So we'll weld the top part of this flange here and we'll weld up the base of it as well. This part came out pretty nice, not a whole lot of sugaring. So we'll weld that up too on the inside just to make sure this is nice and strong. And who knows, maybe we'll see if we can reach down into some of these ports a little bit further down in there. Down where this collector meets up. See if we can't weld that up a little bit. We'll see. I don't know. I'm not that skilled at this kind of stuff, so let's give it a whirl. We've got this project almost complete. There's only a handful more things to do. But to my abilities, I think this is looking pretty great. I'll show you some of the better welds and some of the eh. <laughs> so you can see here, I, I did pretty nice. And this welded up well, I might go back and just kind of touch that up or not. I don't know. It's going to be somewhere where you can't even see it anyways. Uh, but some of my more questionable stuff. like those don't look too bad I did blow through it right here and had to kind of go back and build up on it and then it's like uh, stuff like this where I already have my tacks that's not the prettiest but it'll hold up I did end up welding inside this wastegate v-band flange I didn't feel super confident that I could get all the way down in here but I do know that I've got it built up plenty plenty of penetration here towards where we can just kind of go in there and finish cleaning this up a little bit I welded up the inside of the flange as well where I felt like it needed it just to add a little more strength in which I did start to kind of punch through a little bit here those these welds were semi clean looking but this welder does have some pretty good power oddly enough you can see here I need to go and clean that up and then because we are working with a round shape and we're trying to match this oval, I smashed them as much as I could. This is pretty flush here. However, I'm just going to go through and just kind of do a light weld here and then maybe build it up just a little bit more right here. So that way I can take my carbide bit and just kind of blend that in. Should work great. So I'm on the home stretch. Just a little bit more work to do. And then once I get the inside of these runners all welded up, you like that mess on the table, I'll take it and toss it on the belt sander over there and we'll flatten the flange out and we'll be all finished. I thought about putting this badge on, but I just can't really. I thought I was gonna have some longer runner lengths and this is about as long as I wanted to make them. So we'll save this for something else. So let's get after the last little bit. And if you're curious as to how I solved this situation over here, I didn't. I actually just ended up cutting off this part of the jig, which isn't a big deal because I can always weld it back. So I'm using this as the heat sink now. All right, I got the interior of these runners all welded up. Put another pass on them. It is still hot, so I'm gonna bolt this thing back up to the jig real quick just to make sure it doesn't start warping or anything. You kind of see this ear is wanting to go down a little bit, so I'm gonna toss it on quickly and see if we can not make sure it's as straight as possible while it gets to room temperature. Pow! Everything's done cooled down. Things flattened back out, went back to where they were at. And one of the interesting things is while this was cooling, you could feel that some of these bolts got loose, so I tightened them back up. Straight for the most part, it will need a little bit of machining. You can see where it kind of lifted here just a little bit, but not a big deal. So now let's take this off the jig and let's go ahead and bore this thing out. Or, you know, smoothing the inside of those runners. Where the flange is at? Let's get that. 
We are at the new shop and let's go ahead and finish that manifold up. Apollo's enjoying the new shop. Get your butt over here. Aren't you boy? Come on. So I'm gonna put a new belt on the belt sander, something that's meant for metal, and we're going to level this flange out. I started working on it just a little bit, but this belt just was not up for the task. And you can see I ported the ports already, just kind of blended them out the best that I can. But let's wrap up this manifold, sand those flanges flat, we'll take a look at it, and we'll see how it came out. <laughs> All right, I got the guards off and I got a new belt on. Let's go ahead and sand this thing flat. It's getting there. Just need to keep on grinding away. After a lot of hard work, this thing is finally finished. Check it out. I hope this goes to show that if I can make a turbo manifold, you can do it as well. Thanks for tuning in. If new to the channel, be sure to subscribe. Give this video a thumbs up. Let me know what you think about the final results of the turbo manifold down in the comments. Until next time, peace out. You peace out.